like a bell cut. Alright, today we're going to be doing some stuff on the old brakes. It's one of the things that the guy that I bought it off mentioned about. Um, as you know, this is a 120 model, um, but it has had the 180, um, I think a 280mm disc set up from the ZS 180s. Um, he has put new pads and discs on it, but it was two or three years ago, I believe. So it's just all corroded and pitted and horrible, really. And when you drive it, you can feel it graunch and as soon as you apply the brakes. Um, so what we're going to do is we got new pads, new discs from EVC. We're going to take calipers off. We're going to shot blast the calipers, paint them red again, and we're going to upgrade the lines to hell braided ones. Um, a set of hell braided lines came in with the car. Um, but it looked like someone tried to clamp it down with a pair of mold grips to stop it leaking while the brakes were apart at some point. Uh, so I chucked them in the bin and stored some new ones. Uh, so yeah, we'll make a start. We'll get the caliper off, we'll get the disc off. And um, I'll show you a look around the condition of the, the caliper and what not and um, we'll start sandblasting them. Right, as you can see, got it all off. Just have a look at that. You can see the paint is very burnt around there. Not a lot of corrosion on it, so they should clean up quite good. Uh, quick look at these. Only one pad retainer though. Don't know where the other one is. They're nice and free. As you can see, the Pads are brand new. Discs, they're brand new. They've just been sat out in the elements and just gone rusty, which is a shame. And have a quick look at the level of detail this guy has gone into to to get this done. Everything's been powder coated, the shock. The suspension fork, the hub, the upright, 
Up our arms are all new, a bit of cobwebs there. You know, all inside here has been painted. You know, the tire's been rubbed on that one there. So we might have to give that another coat of paint. I think it's actually um, like a wax oily type paint. Like a, not a seam sealer. Um, like an under seal type wax oily paint that is. But yeah, very nice. So we're just going to um, get these in the shop blasting cabinet, clean them all up. I've got all new seals, pistons, retainers, pads, discs, sliders, nuts, bolts, everything. I've got the whole lot. So we'll get these in the, in the shop blasting cabinet and get them cleaned up. Blasted, all hanging up, ready to be painted. I've got a little heater on. As you can see, didn't do the best of jobs, but better to have it like this than not really prepping them at all. I've left everything in, like all the pistons and the nipples and the bleed screws and. The boots and whatnot just so it's you don't get all the crap go into that area once they're painted and properly dry then I can then rebuild them take out all the old crap and put in the nice shiny new stuff so this is the stuff that I got got four cans of eBay yeah, about 20 odd quid um, obviously I've got to do the rears as well Hopefully, well, I sort of for a can per caliber, really, or can per corner. 
if I have some left over, have some left over, use it on something else. But we'll start doing some light coats on it and um, then go from there. There you go, that's a nice tack coat. We'll leave it about 10 minutes to get tacky. And then um, we'll give it some more coats. There we go, that's the second coat on. You can see it's coming out quite nice. I think that might need a third coat yet. Might even need a fourth. But we'll see how they come out after the third coat. Several days later. All right, it's been a couple of days now. Um, just letting this paint cure and harden properly, um, just so it don't chip or scuff, and it's as durable as it can be, really. As you see, the finish of them has come out really nice. Nice, solid finish, nice and shiny. They look a little bit orange on the camera, but they are in person really red. I've just built up one caliber, got all new sliders in there, all new pistons and seals, new stainless steel bleeds nibble, um, just to make sure that I had everything and. Um, I wasn't having to stop the video halfway through because I didn't have the right tool basically or the right the right part um, so I'm gonna stick these to the side and I'm gonna get on and build these and show you how it's done all right so we've got new dust cover for the piston new seal for the piston new piston new pad retaining clips New stainless steel bleed nipples, um, pads, slider carrier sliders, and obviously the boots to go with that. So we're just going to do the caliper carrier first because it's nice and easy. Now these aren't too bad, they're quite clean inside, but sometimes these can be really rusted up. And a trick I've used before is actually getting a drill bit in here and just winding a drill bit in and out by hand. So we've got this one here, that's got a, like a rubber stopper on it. Now this one goes to the bottom of the carrier when it's fitted into the vehicle and that just stops knocking and vibration every time you apply the brakes 
so we just stick that in, in this one for now but we'll double check that's at the bottom just work that grease in and out And just pop these pad retaining clips in. Nice and simple. Just clip into place. Just make sure they're nice and home. It's just to carry it on. Nice and simple. Now we're going to get on and do this caliper. As I mentioned, I've put all the bolts back in, left all the caliper piston and seals in, just to stop any sandblast and grit going into it. You just need to force it out. I normally use a bit of compressed air to sort of force it out with. Okay, let's pop that out. They're not in bad condition. I think these have been rebuilt before to be honest with you. Make sure you put that seal to one side where you know it's the old seal, or just stick it in the bin. So we're just going to make sure all the piss now is nice and clean.
So that's all fully stripped out. So we can make a start on rebuilding again now. We'll start off with these. These are stainless steel ones. I managed to, they don't list the stainless steel ones for ZS, but the font ones are exactly the same as the, or the front brake nibbles are exactly the same as a Astra BXR. So they fit in a treat. And I did buy four and hope that the rear ones are the same as well, but time will tell. Alright, so that's on. The next thing is the main seal. Just make sure you give that plenty of grease. Help the piston slide in and out during assembly, then. And that goes in that inner groove. Make sure it's nice and flat. I'm just want a bit more crease around it again, just to aid assembly. You just need to test fit your piston. a little bit tricky so I have to wiggle it in there you go that's in I just need to pop it back out again now Now the hardest bit is trying to get that on. And I found the best course for this one is to slide it over the piston first. And you want this lip here to stick out past the piston, but obviously you still want the boot on the piston. And then just to aid fitting, just put a little bit of this grease around that lip. That helps slide it in place then. And then, and this is tricky, 
to the best of people, let alone people of only one proper functioning hand. You want to try and sit that lip in the bottom groove. And then push it in all the way around. Again, this is quite tricky. Right, so we've got this dust cover in, and this is another way some people do it. And so I get the dust cover in the caliper, and then try and feed this lip all the way round. But I can't ever do it that way. Right, there we go. That's the nipple. That's all in there. I mean, them out of boots, they are tricky. Sometimes they'll go straight in, and sometimes they're just a pain in the butt, really. Um, but yeah, so that's that caliber built up. We can now take it to the car and fit them to the vehicle. Right, so as I mentioned, I've got some nice EVC discs, they're just a standard discs that have been coated. I think they coat all their discs now in this black coating. So you want to make sure that flange is nice and smooth because if not you'll end up getting real wobble.
Well, I'll just find the torque settings for these and um, we'll talk about it. Right, so these main caliper bolts are 108 newton meters. Nicely talked up now. I'm just going to check that these pins are in the right place. You want the ones with the rubber bit at the bottom, which that one has. So that one can stay in there like that. Now we've got some nice green stuff pads. Again, this is, they just came in with the kit. So I've well, just put a little bit of copper ease on the on the contact areas. You shouldn't really need to have to do this because the the pad retainers and the carriers are stainless steel. But I just like to do it because I've always done it. And this metal tab here is a brake wear indicator so when the brake pads start to get low that then scrapes up against the disc and give you a, an audible warning to say that your pads are low Now we can get our caliper. Now these are labelled. So you've got an R on there for right hand side. That just slots over. Some nice shiny new bolts as well. And they just go in there nicely. Now they're 27 newton meters. So I just have to get a, a torque wrench that I do down that low. Alright, so that's the caliper all fitted on. Discs and pads. So now we've just got to replace this manky old brake hose with some more shiny ones. 
and bleed brakes. Now I know these have all been apart before. So as long as the previous person hasn't over you them, and they should come apart quite nicely. leave that connected there for a minute just leave that hanging down and it stops all the bright fluid coming out at the minute and get all over the floor right so these are the ones I've gone with held braking performance so they call it a carbon effect but it's just a, a black black clear plastic that goes over and it comes with all new banjo bolts and washers all stainless steel just fit that on there Just need that for now. There is a torque setting for that, so we will do the torque setting. Let's that's got in there. It's just caliber bolt banjo. It's 34 newton meters. All right, so we'll crack this off. That's actually quite loose. this little clip off that hose will come out and that will start leaking brake fluid 
to make sure you've got something on the floor to catch up. How we do? Just stick on these one in there. Tying it up. Need a 17 mil here to hold that flexi down. up nice and tight don't go too mad on it I hope she will snap it off a lot of bit of plate play cleaner Because that brake fluid will eat through anything really. Or well, if I don't eat through it, I'd certainly discolour any paintwork or powder coating. Make sure it's all nice and dry and clear. And then we've got our retaining clip to put on. And that's it, that is done. All right, so that's all done. Now I'm going to do the other side. I'm not going to bleed the brakes purely because I've got the other side to do and I've got the back to do yet so when I bleed the brakes I'll drain out all the fluid and I'll put some nice new fresh fluid in it so it's you should replace brake fluid every two years for a standard really um, that's just manufacturers guidelines but they never get done so we're gonna do it just so it know it's all done and the brakes are as healthy as they can be now they do look really good in my opinion and hopefully they'll perform as good as they look so I'll leave it there I'll get a video editor and out and um, so you can have a look and um, hopefully you can take something away with it and have the confidence to rebuild and paint your front calipers and to enjoy it really and also to save your money from from garages because they they'll just want to put new calipers on calipers on um, instead of rebuilding it and these calipers are starting to get harder and harder to come by now especially genuine ones um, so it's well worth doing it and doing it right thank you for watching